let's talk about aberration. So in your syllabus in IB physics, uh, there are two aberrations. According to the study guide, you can see that there is two. One is called spherical, one is called chromatic aberration. And you're expected to explain what they are and describe uh, how to reduce their effects. Okay, so uh, right now I want you to take a look of the textbook here. And apparently uh, you can already see there are two kind of aberration. Um, and I want you to read that and try to draw a table like this and uh, find out the cause of uh, why this aberration will happen and how to improve that. You may want to pause the video now and we'll check the answers later. Okay, so uh, before we check the answer, uh, let's talk about uh, what they are first to get your get you to understand better. So. Um, as you should know, uh, right now, uh, for the first one, which is spherical aberration, uh, that is saying for the light going into the spherical lens, uh, when you get closer or further apart from the principal axis, so this is principal axis, this is a very nice diagram I find from Google. So you can see that for those lights, so for example, like this one, this one, and this one, uh, they will converge at this point while for the one that are more further apart from the principal axis uh, they will be focusing at some other points that actually all of them are changing so like it's not like two separate points but it's a continuous change of focal point and that's something to do with the thickness or the geometric geometric uh, shape of the spherical lens itself. So uh, that's why some people may, may make some other lenses uh, not in spherical shape. Uh, and in that case, you will have something, uh, I mean, you will have the focal point at the same, exactly the same position. Uh, for mirror, it will also have the same issue. Uh, we, we also call it the same name called uh, spherical aberration. So for spherical mirror, uh, you can see that for the light going in, uh, they will converge at this point or this point or this point so all because of uh, the distance from the parallel lights uh, to the principal axis okay so once again they have different focal points so again this is due to the geometric shape and of course the law of physics itself uh, this is the natural result uh, for being a spherical shape and uh, in school, when we look, have the lesson, we talk about uh, something called parabolic. And parabolic is another shape which you may, well, I mean, normally people, when you see it, you may think that, oh, it's also kind of curved. You don't actually know whether it's spherical or uh, parabolic. Uh, but then for parabolic, if you have learned about maths, you learn about parabolic function. And apparently parabolic function is different from a circle function. Um, and the special thing about this is uh, when light travel parallel to principal axis, they will all converge at one point, as you could see, no matter how close you are, how, how far you are away from the principal axis. So parabolic uh, mirror uh, is harder to manufacture, but then uh, in terms of performance, it will be much better. So uh, you could actually see um, for the actual situation, how it will look like. And uh, without aberration, you can see that the image is very sharp. So for example, these three dots are like very clear dots. Uh, when you have spherical aberration, you can see the point become more buried. If you try to use a grid to represent, so imagine originally here, you have a, like originally it was a very strict net. Okay, uh, as an object, and after that lens, spherical lens, then what you see is it will be distorted. And you should find one special thing is in the middle, so around this area, for example, these four square more closer to the middle, they did not distort as much. All right, it's more still more or less the same as a uh, square, but when you look at the side, the more far away from the center which means the principal axis they distort even more so for example like this one all right you can see they distort a lot or you can see uh for example like this one distort a lot and yeah like this one it distort a lot so um 
so yeah this is the idea of how spherical apparition would look like when they form an image um, more macroscopically you can take a look of this picture I find again from Google uh, one way of reducing this effect is called stopping down which is mentioned in your textbook as well um, and the idea is uh, you would need to reduce the amount of light going in so that the image you can see from uh, this one it will be much more sharp comparing to to this one or right, if you try to look at the edge especially you'll find the one on the right hand side here will be much sharper and this is something to do with the sharpness of uh, the photo in, in itself physically uh, of course there are some software to to change the sharpness but that's something to do with uh, pose like processing so what we are talking about here is uh, when light going into the lens uh, what happened to those images so stopping down by closing down the aperture that means like this one uh, this is a aperture that means like the light when the lights going in to that and if you could reduce imagine the light going in like this and then of course there are a beam of light going in so what you do is for a smaller one you just limit the amount of light going in which means uh, the light could actually pass through the aperture would only be the one that are close to principal axis then of course it would reduce the effect of spherical aberration but of course this is not a very good way of doing it because apparently it would reduce the brightness of the photo then you have to use some other technique for example in uh, photography there's something called ISO to increase the sensitivity of your camera uh, if you increase that then it, the, your photo become brighter but then you will have more noise in that case uh, but don't worry if you don't understand this part this part is fine because it's nothing to do with uh, your IB physics but it's just some general knowledge for some of you who who actually talk pictures a lot I think you would know about this uh, the other way of doing it is uh, using some other lens some other shapes of lens so as I said you can use parabolic for mirror for lens you may use uh, something called a spherical lens uh, for those if you purchase glasses if you wear glasses if you go to those shop in Hong Kong uh, you you'll be able to see there's a list of lens of course uh, those stuff would help you to test or how serious your short-sighted or long-sighted um, situation it is but then when you try to go go there and try to choose lenses or if you have ever go with your friend to go or family to go there uh, there are different kind of lens you can buy and there are two main kind of lens one is called well spherical in Chinese they call Kao Min which actually means is fear all right and there is some other kind that, that is uh, in Engl English is spherical and they call it Fei Kao Min and guess what of course if you look at the price you can already tell or if you if you really want that you can go well maybe not not now uh, in Hong Kong but then uh, you can go and check it out next time for spherical is more expensive you can check it out next time and apparently uh, it's simply because it's performing better in terms of looking at stuff and it's harder to manufacture of course so uh, spherical is a better lens than the usual uh, the standard spherical one actually most of the glasses you can buy is always spherical now in Hong Kong and yeah so this is a picture of um, parabolic lens so uh, uh, sorry parabolic mirror I think I just showed you earlier so here's a summary for spherical uh, which happened for both lens and mirror the cause is because of the, the light will have slightly different focal length depending on the distance between the point where they enter the lens to the principal axis so again further apart or closer to the principal axis will have different focal length um, so basically you have to memorize or right, sadly in physics you have to memorize something so this is something that uh, barely you have to mem memorize and in the exam they may just simply ask you to recall these things it's quite simple actually uh, the way to improve it is uh, something called sorry not stepping down st uh, stopping down uh, which means a smaller aperture uh, getting less light going in uh, the other way of doing it is simply changing the shape 
the geometric shape of your lens or mirror. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, uh, chromatic. Chromatic aberration, uh, as you can see from the picture or from the textbook, you can see that uh, is something to do with the lights going in. Of course, apparently uh, this consists of different color of light, which is uh, white light, apparently. And then when they enter the lens, which make of glass probably or any other kind of you know material actually, uh, they would have different refractive index. If you recall what you learned from year 10 about prism, this is actually a more general physics phenomena we call it dispersion. So because of different refractive index, then for different color of light, uh, then they would refract at a different angle in that case. If you remember, uh, the red one would be the fastest and while the violet or the blue, if you like to say, is the slowest. Right, it, when you try to rank different color. So in that case, that's why they have different focal length in that case. So nothing to do with just now spherical, but uh, we are just purely talking about chromatic aberration here. Uh, here is a video which uh, you could try to take a look. I should put the link in the description and that would actually tell you a uh, very nice, as you can see, these are white light and going in spread into different color. And then you can see they have different uh, focal point and if you're a photographer then the best thing you may want to do is simply take uh, the middle of all the focal point so that will be the best focus and that's all you can do um, as similar to what we could do uh, some people may also think about hey let's make it smaller so like the aperture smaller and in that case you will still find out there, there is still a little bit of uh, chromatic aberration and if you still don't understand then let me show you this picture which is actually taken by Brian your classmate uh, saying that using the telescope that you you made in the astro cam and I think this picture is actually the best picture to explain uh, chromatic aberration because when you look at the moon and you know moon in itself is reflecting the light from the sun which is white light and by looking through the telescope you see that on the left hand side and right hand side they show the blue color and red color and don't get me wrong this is nothing to do some of you may think about hey would that so would that be Doppler's effect uh, no it's nothing to do with Doppler's effect not nothing to do with that uh, because the speed is not apparently traveling very very fast so you don't actually see that and it doesn't make sense too i mean even if you talk about Doppler's effect it shouldn't be like that color so the reason why you have this is once again uh because of the chromatic aberration so the two end you show the the two end color of the rainbow which is red and violet but in our case uh violet is not very sensitive to our eyes so we see more like blue here okay so this is a very good picture actually showing not the moon <laughs> but uh, showing the chroma chromatic aberration some way to improve it you may want to say is uh, if you look at the textbook they said that uh, to put another lens onto it so uh, there's a name called a chromatic doublet uh, which actually means that you put another lens which is actually concave lens if you look at this so originally you can see at the top this is what happened normally if you don't correct that, if you try to correct that, you want to put a uh, concave lens, which uh, is made of another different refractive index. Uh, I can't explain in a very detailed way uh, here, but you can imagine it's some sort of uh, geometric way so that they all focus again here. Okay, by manipulating the refractive index and also the shape. So that is also why when you look at uh, some of your glasses, you will find that uh, even when I say if you are short sighted, uh, you will be wearing concave lens and when you are long sighted, you're wearing convex lens. You don't actually find the shape of your glasses uh, exactly like the one that we, we talk about or the one that you touch in the physics lab because uh, commercially uh, people would of course try to improve the 
design reducing different kind of aberration and by the way the two that aberration we talk about today chromatic and spherical is only the most common two there are actually more than that uh, this is a diagram which I like to show you um, um, this is a, apparently a photo of a camera like those really big camera their lens and as you know uh, those kind of lens usually cost like a few thousand and there must be a reason why because usually when you think about hey technology when you know uh, technology events uh, you know the old technology usually will get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper but how come the lens is always still so expensive and that is because when we talk about a lens a camera lens inside you can see here there are so many lens so many pieces of lens so say one two three four five six seven eight nine nine lenses for this one i just randomly grab one from the uh, google and you can also see that uh, not all of them are convex lens some of them are concave lens for example th th this one and apparently this is convex lens uh, and in that in a certain way of combination it's very hard again for me to explain because it's a lot of mathematical calculation inside uh, the best is actually making a program to let the you know the program to calculate everything and try to simulate at all the angle whether the light will, will actually focus at the sensor um, very accurately and all focusing at one point but uh, what I want to show you is uh, for the more commercial way to do it inside there are actually many lenses so that's why when you place if you ever have one big camera or your maybe your family or pa your parents have a big camera the lens is actually quite uh, fragile in a way that you don't want to throw them you know around get them uh, on like damage uh, not even shock so that's why you see those camera bed are always uh, installed with uh, sponge or something to reduce the shock so finally here is the summary for uh, chromatic as well first of all chromatic uh, only happen in lens because apparently for mirror the lights don't get through the mirror they only reflect on the mirror surface so you never talk about chromatic uh, aberration for mirror uh, for the reason why it happened is again different wavelength or different color you may say more physics is wavelength or frequency we have different reflected index so they will have different focal length or focal point and the way to improve it as we said uh, you can use uh, combining lenses which we, we may call it a chromatic doublet uh, another way of doing it which apparently is not a very good way uh, is more like you kind of cheat uh, to, to, to avoid the, the, the problem is by uh, using monochromatic light that means uh, using one single color so in that case since you only have one color then there wouldn't be any chromatic uh, aberration okay so that's all for the two aberration and I would uh, I mean you are expected to at least remember the content in this table